I never thought I'd discover my husband's betrayal through a misdirected email. But that's exactly how my world started crumbling on a perfectly ordinary Tuesday morning. My name is Alara, and until that moment I was living what I thought was a pretty decent life. I own a travel agency that's finally turning a profit after five years of grinding work, and I'm, or was, married to Nolan, a financial analyst who always seemed to have our future mapped out. I was sipping my morning coffee and scrolling through work emails when I noticed one from Luxury Estates Realty in my personal inbox. The subject line read, Re. Purchase Agreement, 47 Maple Grove Estate. I figured it was spam until I saw it was addressed to my husband and his mother, Marion. Dear Mr. Devereux and Mrs. Devereux, as discussed during our viewing yesterday, I've attached the preliminary purchase agreement for the property. The sellers are quite motivated and with your pre-approval already in place. My coffee went cold as I read through the entire email chain. They've been house hunting for weeks, a 5,000 square foot mansion with a content creator studio and guest wing. Price made my stomach turn, $1.2 million. That's when I noticed my mother-in-law's enthusiastic response about her lifestyle brand's new headquarters. I must have read that email five times before my phone buzzed. Speaking of the devil, it was Marion. Alara, darling, are you free for lunch today? I have the most exciting news. My hands were shaking. Actually, Marion, I'm swamped at work. Maybe another time. Oh. Her disappointment dripped through the phone. Well, Nolan and I were hoping to discuss something important with you. Perhaps dinner. I gripped my desk. Why don't we discuss the house you're planning to buy right now? The silence that followed was deafening. Then, oh dear, you weren't supposed to find out this way. But isn't it wonderful? The perfect space for all of us. All of us. I echoed. Of course. You, Nolan, myself, one big happy family. The guest wing will be perfect for my blog studio, and you'll have plenty of space for a home office. Though you might not need it once the lifestyle brand takes off. I ended the call mid-sentence, my mind racing. Nolan and I had just finished renovating our current home last year. We'd picked every fixture, every paint color together. Or so I thought. I drove to Nolan's office, something I'd never done before. His secretary tried to stop me, but I walked right past her into his corner office. He was on the phone, looking annoyingly handsome in his tailored suit. We need to talk, I said loud enough that he looked up, startled. I'll call you back, he told his caller, then smiled at me like nothing was wrong. This is a surprise. Everything okay? I pulled up the email on my phone and held it out. You tell me. His face fell as he scanned the screen. Ah. Mom wasn't supposed to include your email. That's what you're worried about? The email address. I laughed, but it came out hollow. Not the fact that you're buying a house behind my back. It's not behind your back, he said, using his reasonable voice, the one that always made me feel like I was being irrational. Mom needs more space for her blog, and this is a great investment opportunity. I was going to tell you once everything was finalized. Once everything was finalized? I repeated. So after you committed us to a million-dollar mortgage? He leaned back in his chair, looking irritatingly calm. Mom's contributing half. And honestly, Alara, you're overreacting. This is a good thing for all of us. That's when I noticed the framed photo on his desk, not of us, but of him and Marion at some charity gala. It had replaced our wedding photo. I turned and walked out, ignoring him calling my name. As I drove back to my office, one thought kept circling in my mind. This wasn't just about a house. This was about control and I was losing it, losing everything, one carefully orchestrated step at a time took exactly three days after signing the papers for our new house before Marion showed up with four suitcases and a ring light. Just until my wing is renovated, she said, wheeling her designer luggage across our threshold like she was checking into a five-star hotel. I stood in my kitchen, correction, our kitchen now, watching her direct the movers with her essential equipment for her lifestyle blog. 
three light boxes, two tripods, and what looked like enough camera gear to film a Hollywood movie made their way into our living room. Darling, Marion called out, could you help me set up my temporary studio in the dining room? The lighting is simply divine in there. We eat in the dining room, I said, gripping my coffee mug tighter. She waved her hand dismissively. Oh, we can eat in the kitchen. So much more casual anyway. Besides, my followers are expecting a house tour video tomorrow. Before I could respond, Nolan appeared, straightening his tie. Mom, everything okay? Need any help settling in? Your wife seems concerned about the dining room situation, Marion said, her voice dripping with sweetness. Perhaps you could explain to her the importance of maintaining my posting schedule? I watched my husband's face do that thing where he tries to please everyone while actually pleasing no one. L, it's just temporary. Maybe we could eat in the kitchen for a few weeks? That's when my phone buzzed. It was Jasper, Nolan's younger brother, asking if I wanted to grab coffee. I'd never said yes to anything faster in my life. Twenty minutes later, I was sitting across from Jasper in our favorite coffee shop, venting about the morning's events. Unlike his brother and mother, Jasper's artistic soul came with a healthy dose of self-awareness. She's already redecorating, I said, stabbing at my muffin. She replaced my throw pillows with something called Coastal Grandmother Chic. Jasper nearly choked on his Americano. Please tell me you're joking. I wish. She's already filmed three TikToks about transforming a basic space into a content creator's dream. I mimicked her social media voice, making Jasper laugh. You know what's really going on, right? He asked, suddenly serious. Ever since Dad died, she's been terrified of becoming irrelevant. The blog, the house, it's all about control. And Nolan's letting her have it, I added. He always has. Jasper leaned forward. Remember when he canceled your honeymoon because Mom needed emergency gallbladder surgery? which turned out to be acid reflux, I finished. My phone lit up with notifications. Marion had already posted her first house tour teaser, featuring my living room, now completely rearranged, with the caption, Making over my son's starter home. Wait until you see what we have planned. Hashtag luxury living, hashtag family first, hashtag transformation Tuesday. Starter home. I showed Jasper the post. We bought this place last week. Al, Jasper said gently, you need to set boundaries now or this is just the beginning. When I got home, I found Marion hosting a live streaming session from my office. She'd moved my desk to make room for her ring light setup, and my client files were stacked haphazardly in the corner. And here's where I'll be teaching my living your best life after 60 masterclass, she was saying to her phone. Of course, we'll need to update this dated decor. That's enough, I said, walking into frame. This is my office, Marion. My workspace. Her eyes widened, but she kept smiling for the camera. Oh, viewers, meet my daughter-in-law. She's letting me stay while we renovate my wing of the new house. Isn't she sweet? I reached over and ended her live stream. That was extremely rude she said, dropping the sugary tone. I was in the middle of connecting with my community, and I'm in the middle of running a business, I shot back. From my office, which you've turned into your personal studio without asking. Nolan said I could use any room I needed, she replied, straightening her designer blouse. Perhaps you should discuss your concerns with him. As if on cue, my husband appeared in the doorway. Everything okay? Mom, your followers are asking what happened to the live stream. I looked between them, my husband and his mother united in their complete dismissal of my feelings, and made a decision. You know what? You're right. We should discuss this. All of us. Tonight. But as I walked away, I heard Marion's voice. Don't worry, sweetheart. She'll adjust. They always do. We'll see about that, I thought, pulling out my phone to text Jasper. I was done adjusting. I found the contract in Nolan's home office printer tray. He must have forgotten to collect it after printing, a rookie mistake for someone usually so careful about covering his tracks. 
The title read Reality Content Series Agreement, The Devereux Dynasty. My hands trembled as I scanned the document. Marion wasn't just planning to use our new house for her blog. She was turning our entire life into a reality show. Twelve episodes already greenlit by a streaming service, featuring the glamorous transformation of a multi-generational family living their best life. The worst part? Nolan had signed it. Not just as a participant, but as an executive producer. I was still staring at the contract when Marion's voice floated up from downstairs. Darling, could you come down? We're about to start filming the family dinner segment. Family dinner segment. The words made my stomach turn. I hadn't even known we were being filmed. Downstairs, our kitchen had been transformed into a set. Professional lighting equipment cast an artificial glow over our dining table, which was perfectly staged with food that definitely hadn't come from my kitchen. Marion stood directing two cameramen while Nolan adjusted his tie in a ring light. There you are. Marion beamed. Quick, change into something more. Camera friendly. I laid out a lovely blouse on your bed. You went into our bedroom? I asked, but she was already turning to the camera crew. Let's get a test shot of the family gathering for dinner. Nolan, sit at the head of the table. Alara, you'll be on his right once you change, of course. No, I said quietly. Marion paused mid-direction. I'm sorry. I said no. I held up the contract. I found this. Were you ever going to tell me about the show or just ambush me with cameras until I gave in? Nolan stepped forward, hands raised placatingly. Elle let me explain. It's an amazing opportunity. To what? Exploit our life for views? I turned to Marion. Is that why you really moved in? To set this up? Don't be dramatic, Marion said, but her eyes darted to the cameras. This is about family. Building something together. Making memories. Making money, I corrected her. I saw the contract terms. Six figures per episode plus merchandising rights. Which we'd share, Nolan interjected. Think about it, L. We could retire early, travel the world, while living our life on camera. Having every private moment edited for maximum drama. I laughed bitterly. Is that why you've been so agreeable to everything she wants? Because you're producing the show. Camera crew exchanged uncomfortable glances. Marion stepped closer, lowering her voice. Sweetheart, you're making a scene. Let's discuss this privately. Why? Isn't drama good for ratings? I pulled out my phone and started recording. How's this for content? Woman discovers husband and mother-in-law plan to turn her life into a reality show without her consent. Great storyline, right? Turn that off, Marion hissed, her camera-ready smile cracking. Why? Isn't this what you wanted? Raw, authentic family moments. Elara, Nolan warned, you're embarrassing yourself. No, I'm finally seeing clearly. I turned to the crew. Show's over. Pack up your equipment and leave, or I'm calling the police to report trespassing. You can't do that, Marion said. We have a contract, which I never signed. I held up my phone, still recording. And I never will. So unless you want your followers to see the real you, Marion, I suggest you and your crew leave. Now. Camera crew, reading the room, started packing up. Marion watched them, her perfectly curated facade crumbling. You're ruining everything, she whispered, and for a moment I saw real fear in her eyes. This was my last chance to matter. Mom, Nolan started, but she was already rushing upstairs, leaving him torn between following her and dealing with me. I made the choice easy for him. Go. You always do. After everyone left, I sat alone in our overlit kitchen, surrounded by cold, staged food. My phone buzzed, a text from Jasper. Saw Mom's meltdown post about betrayal and ungrateful family members. You okay? I looked around at my life, now literally staged for someone else's story, and replied, No! 
but I will be. Because this wasn't just about a reality show anymore. This was about reclaiming my reality, whatever it took. The morning after I shut down Marion's reality show dreams, I walked into my travel agency to find my entire staff huddled around Sarah's computer, whispering. They scattered when they saw me, but not before I caught a glimpse of Marion's latest blog post, When Family Betrays My Truth. It's gone viral, Sarah said apologetically, turning her screen toward me. The video had over 200,000 views already. There was Marion, perfectly lit and dabbing at carefully manufactured tears, telling her version of last night's events. My own daughter-in-law, she sniffled in the video. So consumed by jealousy over my success that she's trying to destroy our family's chance of happiness. My phone buzzed, another client cancellation. The third this morning. I'd built this agency from nothing, and now Marion's followers were review-bombing my business, calling me a toxic family destroyer and dream killer. Should we respond? Sarah asked. Before I could answer, Jasper burst through the door, looking unusually disheveled. Oh, we need to talk. Now. In my office, he paced while running his hands through his hair. Have you checked your email? The one from the network? I hadn't. Opening my inbox. I found it. A cease and desist letter threatening legal action for interference with contracted production. Attached was a document with my signature. I never signed this, I said, but my blood ran cold as I studied the signature. It was good. Really good. Nolan, Jasper said quietly. He's forged documents before. Remember Dad's investment paperwork? I did. It had been brushed off as a misunderstanding, just like everything else in this family. There's more, Jasper continued, pulling out his phone. Mom's announcing a special live stream tonight. She's calling it the truth about Alara, a mother's heartbroken. My hands started shaking. She's going to destroy me. No, Jasper said firmly. She's trying to force you to play along. Classic Marion. Create enough public pressure that you'll cave. A notification popped up on my computer. Another cancellation email. Six years of building my reputation gone in a morning because of one woman's social media vendetta. I need to talk to Nolan, I said, standing up. Al, wait, Jasper reached for my arm, but I was already moving. I found my husband in his office, looking annoyingly unruffled despite everything. We need to discuss the forged signature, I said, dropping the letter on his desk. It's not forged, he replied smoothly. You signed it last week during the house closing. Remember? There were a lot of documents that day. Casual gaslighting made my head spin. You really expect me to believe that? What I believe, he said, leaning back, is that you're having an emotional reaction to change. Mom's success threatens you. I get it. But fighting this will only hurt you more. Like the mysterious client cancellations? The review bombing? Is that what you mean by hurt? Something flickered across his face. Not guilt, but satisfaction. Business is business, L. Sometimes we have to make tough choices. That's when I noticed the photos on his desk had changed again. Now they were all of him and Marion at various events, perfectly staged for their upcoming show. I wasn't in a single one. You know what's funny? I said, surprisingly calm. I actually thought this was about your mother's fear of irrelevance. But it's not, is it? This is about control. It always has been. You're being dramatic. No, I'm finally seeing clearly. You and Marion, you're the same. Everything has to fit your narrative, even if you have to destroy people to make it work. My phone buzzed again, Jasper warning me that Marion had moved up her live stream. It was starting in ten minutes. Last chance, L. Nolan said, his voice soft but threatening. Be part of the family, or... I looked at this man I'd married, really looked at him and saw him clearly for the first time. You know what? I choose, or... Walking out of his office, I called Jasper. 
Remember that dirt you have on Marion from when you managed her social accounts? The fake follower purchases? The staged charity photos? All of it. How fast can you get it to me? Al, he hesitated. This will blow up everything. I watched another cancellation email pop up on my phone. Good. It's about time something real did. Two pink lines appeared on the pregnancy test, and my first thought wasn't joy, it was dread. I sat on the bathroom floor, staring at the positive result while Marion's latest viral video played on my phone, her voice dripping with fake concern. Sometimes those closest to us harbor the deepest resentments. The irony wasn't lost on me. Here I was, preparing to expose her social media empire as a fraud, and life through this curveball. A baby. Nolan's baby. Our baby. My phone buzzed, Jasper calling. I let it go to voicemail. He'd been ready to leak everything about Marion's fake followers and staged charity events, but now? A knock on the bathroom door made me jump. Eh. Nolan's voice. You've been in there a while. Everything okay? I quickly hid the test. Fine. Just not feeling well. Mom's looking for you. The network executives are coming for dinner to discuss the show's direction. They want to meet the whole family. Family. The word felt like a trap now. I opened the door to find Nolan looking surprisingly vulnerable. Listen about yesterday, he started. Maybe we can find a compromise. The show could be good for all of us. I'm pregnant, I said, watching his face carefully. His eyes widened genuine emotion breaking through his usual calculated expression. For a moment, I saw the man I'd married, before Marion, before the show, before everything got so twisted. A baby, he whispered, reaching for me. I stepped back. Don't pretend this changes anything. You still forged my signature. You and your mother are still trying to force me into your perfect family narrative. Or maybe this is a sign, he said, his voice softening. A fresh start. We could make it work, Elle. The show could be about new beginnings, family healing. Stop. My voice cracked. Just stop turning everything into content. My phone buzzed again, Jasper had texted. Network meeting tonight equals damage control. They know about the forgery. m and N planning something big. Be careful. I need some air, I told Nolan, pushing past him. I drove to the coffee shop where Jasper and I usually met, but found Marion waiting instead. She sat at our regular table, perfectly poised with her phone set up to record. Darling, she said warmly, gesturing to the empty chair. Let's talk, just us girls. No cameras. Her phone was clearly recording. What do you want, Marion? To offer you a deal. She slid a contract across the table. Sign this, agree to the show, and we'll make you a co-producer. Cool say in everything. Plus, she paused dramatically. I know about the baby. My hand instinctively went to my stomach. How? Mothers know these things. She smiled. Think about it, we could document the whole journey. Perfect storyline. Family healing, new life, fresh starts. Your travel agency could even be featured will make you the star. For a moment I saw it, the easy path. Give in, play along, let Marion script our lives into her perfect narrative. The baby would have everything, wrapped in the warm glow of filtered reality. Then I saw the glint in her eyes, the same look she had when she moved my office, rearranged my home, pushed me out of frame in every family photo. This wasn't an olive branch. It was a collar. No, I said, standing up. My baby won't be your content. Don't be foolish, she hissed, mask slipping. You're nothing without this family. Your business is failing, your reputation. Is mine to rebuild, I finished. Unlike yours. I walked out, ignoring her calls, and drove to Jasper's studio. He opened the door before I could knock. I can't leak the evidence, I told him. Not now. I'm pregnant. His face fell slightly, confirmation of feelings we'd both been avoiding. Congratulations, he said softly. 
but I'm not giving in either. I met his eyes. I need a different plan, the one that protects the baby but doesn't let them win. Jasper nodded, understanding everything I wasn't saying. Then let's make one. Together. Behind us, my phone lit up with Marion's latest post. Big announcement tonight. Family secrets revealed. Hashtag truth will out. Hashtag family first. The war wasn't over. It was just changing battlefields. The South African sun beat down on us as Marion adjusted her ring light for the hundredth time. Perfect lighting for announcing the pregnancy, she chirped, angling her phone. The followers will love this. We were supposed to be on safari, but instead I was watching my mother-in-law transform our private family moment into content. Again, we haven't agreed to announce anything, I said, one hand protectively over my stomach. Ten weeks along, and already my baby was being scripted into Marion's narrative. Darling, the network expects big moments. They're paying for this trip. She gestured to our luxury lodge where camera crews were setting up. Besides, Nolan already told them. My head snapped up. He what? It's perfect timing, she continued, tapping on her phone. We'll film the announcement at sunset by the watering hole. Very symbolic, new life, circle of life. The world tilted slightly. I grabbed the railing of our deck, morning sickness mixing with betrayal. Mom! Jasper appeared, his usual easy smile replaced with concern. Give it a rest. You don't understand business, dear, she replied, not looking up. Speaking of which, Alara, we need to discuss your wardrobe for tonight's scene. There won't be a scene. My voice shook. This isn't your news to share. Finally, she looked at me. Don't be selfish. This pregnancy is a gift to all of us. Think of the storyline, the sponsorship opportunities. The baby isn't content. I shouted, drawing looks from the crew. Everything okay here? Nolan appeared, looking uncomfortable in his safari-themed outfit, clearly chosen for the cameras. Your wife is being difficult about the announcement, Marion said. Al, he started, using his reasonable voice, the network's already planned the episode around it. We can't back out now. Watch me. I turned to leave, but a wave of dizziness hit me. The African heat, the stress, the betrayal, it was too much. Jasper caught me before I fell. You need to rest, he said firmly. She needs to cooperate, Marion corrected. The light will be perfect in an hour. A sharp pain cut through my abdomen. Something's wrong, I whispered to Jasper. What followed was a blur of movement and voices. The lodge's medical team. A rush drive to the nearest hospital. Jasper holding my hand while Marion filmed behind-the-scenes drama for her followers. In the sterile hospital room, the doctor's words fell like bombs. I'm sorry, but there's no heartbeat. Marion gasped, perfectly timed for her camera. Nolan stood frozen, for once without a script to follow. Turn off the fucking phone, Jasper snapped at his mother. The followers deserve to know. Get out, I screamed, finally breaking. All of you, get out. They left, all except Jasper, who stayed silent, his hands still in mine. Hours later, back at the lodge, I lay in bed listening to Marion's voice drift up from below. In our darkest moments, family is everything. Like and subscribe for tomorrow's update on our journey through grief. My phone buzzed with notifications as her post went viral. Hashtag Devru Family Strong was trending. Nolan came in looking lost. Mom thinks we should film a follow-up segment. Something about healing through sharing. I laughed, a hollow, broken sound. Do you even hear yourself anymore? I'm trying here, Elle. We all process grief differently. This isn't grief, I cut him off. This is content. Everything is content to you people. Our house, our marriage, our baby. My voice cracked. Even losing it. He reached for me, but I turned away. Just go. Through he left, Jasper slipped in with my laptop. You should see this, he said quietly. 
On screen was Marion's latest live stream, but the comments weren't their usual adoring praise. People were calling her out, disgusted by her exploitation of family tragedy. Her carefully curated image was cracking. It's karma, Jasper said softly. But I felt no satisfaction. My baby was gone, my marriage was a script, and my life had become a storyline I never wanted. I can't do this anymore, I whispered. Jasper squeezed my hand. Then don't. Outside, I could hear Marion directing the crew to get better lighting for tomorrow's healing journey footage. But in that quiet hospital room, something inside me finally broke free. Sometimes you have to lose everything to find your way back to yourself. The network executives arrived at the lodge the morning after my miscarriage, just as Marion was setting up for another healing journey live stream. I watched from my balcony as she directed the camera crew, positioning Nolan just so, ensuring the African sunset would catch his grief-stricken expression perfectly. That's when Jasper handed me his phone. You need to see this. It was a video from one of Marion's former assistants going viral. Behind-the-scenes footage of Marion coaching crisis actors for her spontaneous charity moments, staging random acts of kindness and coordinating fake followers. But worse, much worse, was the clip of her planning how to use my pregnancy and now my loss for maximum engagement. The miscarriage is tragic, Marion's voice said in the video, but think of the storyline potential. We'll milk this for months. Something inside me snapped. I walked downstairs, still in my hospital gown, just as Marion was beginning her live broadcast to her millions of followers. Family is everything, she was saying, tears perfectly positioned to catch the light. In our darkest moments. Turn it off, I said quietly. We're live, darling, she hissed through her camera smile. Come, sit with us. Share your journey. Your assistant's video is trending. I said louder, watching her face freeze. The one about your fake charity work. Your crisis actors. Your plans for my miscarriage. The network executives shifted uncomfortably. Nolan stepped forward. L, maybe we should discuss this privately. Why? I turned to the still rolling cameras. Isn't this what you wanted? Raw, real family drama? Elara, Marion's voice held a warning, but I was done being warned. You want content? Here's your content. I faced the camera directly. My mother-in-law planned to monetize my miscarriage. She's been orchestrating every moment of our lives for views. The house, the show, everything, it's all fake. Security, Marion called, but Jasper had positioned himself by the door. Let her speak, he said quietly. You know what's real? My voice cracked. The baby I lost. The marriage I lost. The life I lost trying to fit into your perfect filtered world. Marion lunged for her phone, but I was faster. I grabbed it and scrolled through her drafts folder. Look, pre-written posts about my brave recovery. Sponsored content deals with therapy apps. You are going to turn my grief into a fucking product launch. The network owns this footage, she sputtered. You can't. Actually, one of the executives stepped forward. Given these allegations, we're terminating the contract. Nolan finally spoke up. Mom, tell me you didn't really plan to exploit Elle's miscarriage. Marion's mask cracked. Everything I did, I did for this family. For our brand. Without me, what are any of you? People, I said softly. We're just people. I turned to Nolan, really looking at my husband for the first time in months. But you knew, didn't you? About all of it? His silence was answer enough. Elara, Jasper stepped closer, but I shook my head. I'm done, I said, addressing everyone. With the show, the marriage, all of it. You can keep your perfect online family. I choose reality. You'll regret this, Marion called after me as I walked away. You're nothing without us. I turned back one last time. No, Marion. I'm everything without you. And that's what really terrifies you, isn't it? 
Later, as Jasper helped me pack my bags, we could hear Marion's empire crumbling, her phone buzzing with unfollows, sponsors pulling out, the network lawyers arriving with paperwork. What now? Jasper asked softly. I looked at him, really looked at him, and saw what had been there all along. Understanding. Real connection. Everything my marriage had lacked. Now, I said, I start living unfiltered. But as we left the lodge, I caught a glimpse of my reflection in the window, tired, raw, real. For the first time in years, I recognized myself. Sometimes you have to lose everything to find what was missing all along, truth. Six months after South Africa, I stood in my empty house, our house, watching the real estate agent post the sold sign. No ring lights, no cameras, no carefully curated moments. Just reality, unfiltered and raw. My phone buzzed with a news alert. Lifestyle influencer Marion Devereux returns to Roots, reopens local salon. The article showed her behind a styling chair, looking smaller somehow, more human. Her follower count had dropped from millions to thousands, but the smile in the photo seemed genuine for the first time in years. Nolan had left for Tanzania two months ago, joining a financial literacy program for rural communities. His last email said he was learning to live without an audience. I hoped for his sake it was true. The divorce papers arrived yesterday, already signed. No contest, no drama, no content. I walked through the empty rooms one last time, remembering how this house had become both battlefield and stage. In my old office, Marion's former content studio, I found something tucked behind a drawer. A sealed envelope with my name in Jasper's distinctive scrawl. My hand shook as I opened it. Eh. By the time you read this, I'll be in Barcelona. There's a gallery interested in my work. Real work, not the filtered versions your mother-in-law tried to stage. I wanted to stay. God knows I wanted to tell you everything I've felt these past years. But you need to find your path without another Devereux man trying to shape it. You're the strongest person I know, El. Not because you survived their perfect narrative, but because you dared to write your own. Find your own path. And know you're never alone. G. I pressed the letter to my chest, letting out a breath I'd been holding for years. Outside, a moving truck pulled up, new owners ready to create their own story in these walls. My travel agency was thriving again, ironically boosted by the publicity from Marion's downfall. But I'd changed how we operated. No more luxury influencer trips or staged content. Just real experiences, real connections, real life. As I walked to my car, my phone buzzed with a text from Sarah at the office. Client asking about South African safari tours. Too soon. I smiled, remembering the sunset over the watering hole. Not through a camera lens, but with my own eyes. Book it, I replied. But tell them to leave their phones behind. At a stoplight, I scrolled through my gallery, finding the last photo I'd taken with the Devereux family. Everyone posed perfectly, faces angled for optimal lighting. Everyone except Jasper, who was looking at me instead of the camera, seeing what no one else had. I deleted the photo. The light turned green and I drove toward my new apartment, smaller, simpler mine. On my coffee table lay brochures for Barcelona's art scene. Not today, maybe not tomorrow, but someday. When the story was mine to write. That evening, I received one final email from Marion. Alara, I'm not asking for forgiveness. But today a client cried in my chair, telling me about her divorce. I listened, really listened, without reaching for my phone. Felt. Real. Thank you for breaking our perfect facade. It was the only way any of us could become whole again. Marion. I closed my laptop without responding. Some stories don't need an audience. Some healing happens in the quiet moments between posts, between perfectly framed shots, between carefully scripted lines. My new place had a small balcony overlooking the city. I sat there as the sun set, no cameras, no filters, no one watching. Just me writing the next chapter of my life. Sometimes the happiest endings aren't endings at all. They're just honest beginnings. I opened my phone's notes app and started typing.
Dear Jasper, Barcelona has always been on my bucket list too. But first, I need to tell you a story. A real one. It starts like this. Cursor blinked, waiting. This time, the narrative would be mine. 